Welcome everyone. My name is Shante. My last name is Sashe, and I'll be the instructor for today's Office Tools session. Today's Office Tools session is titled CRM or Office Tools CRM, How to Leverage Your Full Contact List. Please excuse as far as uh, the session itself beginning a little late. It is being recorded uh, to kind of give everyone an understanding. Was having a little technical difficulties as far as getting in. However, I am here. I do thank everyone for being here, and your time is very important. I currently see that we have nine total attendees. Please note, if in fact you do have a question, feel free to respond. Uh, please feel free to present your question via the chat. Currently, all attendees is on, will be on mute. This gives everyone an opportunity to hear and listen along. If I can just have any one of you respond, stating that you are able to hear as far as the audio, and we will continue, please. And I'll go ahead and give a test, test, test. How is the audio coming across? Great. I hear I have a response here, so let's go ahead and get started now. Everyone, thank you again for your time. And let's go ahead and start. So for today's session, to kind of give you an understanding of what we'll be covering and how to leverage your full contact list, the topics will be going over custom contact reports, how to create them. From there, we'll move to form letters, labels, as well as contact groups. Once again, if you do have questions, feel free to go ahead and submit them via the chat. If, in fact, you do have questions other than today's topic or uh, would like to go ahead and get more information on Office Tools, feel free to go ahead and send us an email at to abacusnext.com forward slash support. If, in fact, you are looking to go ahead and schedule for other upcoming webinars or view past webinars as these webinars are recorded, feel free to visit abacusnext.com forward slash webinars. So now let's go ahead and jump into Office Tools and begin our session. I do have my instance of Office Tools. Therefore, if you're following along, feel free, or once again, this is recorded and you can apply it to your office or to your learning. Today, we will begin with as far as the contact list. So let's go ahead and actually, ben, actually begin with, excuse me, the custom contact report. Within the custom contact report, how to actually access this, up at the top, you'll find reports. And here, you're going to find many different reports, such as billing, contacts, reports, schedule, as well as staff reports. To begin, as far as with a custom report, and the great thing about today's training session, a lot of Office Tools clients, yes, they will more so view the standard reports in reference to billing or projects. However, other reports that do provide a lot of information it's typically A as well as B. A, I'm not aware that this report is even in Office Tools. And if I am aware of these custom reports as far as in Office Tools, I am not aware on how to actually configure them. So today you'll have a good understanding on where to locate these custom reports, how to create these custom reports, as well as generate. We'll go over some best practices along the way. So once again, to access this report, up at the top, you'll select on Reports. We'll come into Contact Reports. And down the way, we'll find one titled Custom Field. Now, in this Custom Field report, this is the title of the report. Keep in mind, you're actually going to be building this report. And today we're going to focus on this custom field as I have it already selected. Now, in this custom report, it's more so questioning yourself, what information am I looking to pull? And let's just say for this particular example, what we're looking to pull is more information on our contacts. And what we're actually looking to pull on our contacts is going to be 
the title. We're going to pull billing, contact, project, schedule, staff. Those are the name of the category reports as far as at the top. But this custom report, let's just actually go into the configuration. You're going to work from top to bottom, and you'll see columns. If we open this drop down here, this these are the actual headers, the columns, the data we're looking to incorporate into our report. So one of the first questions that you'd want to present or ask yourself here is, what are you looking to actually pull? And what I'm actually looking to pull at this point in time is to get a contact list. And I'm just going to place everyone on mute just for one hot second. I just need to quickly reset for one second. Thank you. Thank you so much for being patient and holding with me here. So this first report that we're actually going to create will be a referral list report. So here in our first example, we're going to provide this with a title. However, we can save this report to continuously pull this report and that way we don't have to always reconfigure it. So to begin, let's go ahead and say we're looking to pull a referral list report. What are you looking to pull to create this report? At the top, we're going to select on the plus or add a custom report and give this report a title. As you can see, these are the custom reports I currently have as far as within my system. And I'm going to title this referral report. I have in two Fs there. Let's go ahead and drop one. And I'll title it one, two, three. I can now select save. It has been added. And we now have that report. Now, how are we going to configure this report? What information for this referral list do you want to have incorporated? Well, I would like to have, in these columns I can open, this is going to allow me to build my report. I'm going to first select on file as print as. We know this. I would like to have the contact client information. So it's in an alphabetical order. And here we can select on not first name, excuse me, and it's not going to be in an alphabetical order. File as. And this is going to be the print as that I would want to incorporate on the report. Here to the right, I can now select on add. And as you can see, file as has been added to this report. What other information are we looking to include? Yes, we can stop here, or we can also incorporate other columns. I'm now also going to include here would be home phone number or home phone. And there it is, point select, it has been selected. I'm now going to add it to my report. As you can see here, there's a lot of data that we can incorporate into these reports. And I'm just building this on the fly. Another uh, information from this dropdown I would like to incorporate is going to be contact sense. How long has this client been a contact? Since when? What date? That's good information there. It has been selected. Let's go ahead and add it to our report. And then also as well, we're going to incorporate or include referred by. And as you can see, well, you may, be, you, may, you may not be able to tell, test, test two, three, four. These are my custom fields that are uh, created within the contacts tab. And yes, I can incorporate those custom fields. So now I'm looking for a one titled referred by. Now let's add it in. So now, these are the four items that I have incorporated into my custom report I'm looking to create. We may also use filters to control these columns above. Down below right here, I can open the drop down and say maybe I would like to use a filter of referred by. So now I can choose certain people that are providing referrals to our office. Well, this is strictly an example. I didn't want to necessarily incorporate this because I can select add 
and now I can say show me more information from this contact or these contacts. Whenever you see this ellipsis button with the open square and three dots in the middle, this is an ellipsis button that you can select to group, grab more than one contact that we actually see here or by a specific contact. I'm not going to configure this, I just more so want to call your attention to it. If in fact this report is to your liking, once again, we've already created the report, we can now save this as a custom report to keep us from having to reconfigure it every time we would like to run it. Well, if we created the custom report by title, that custom report by title would then be here, as you can see, referral report one, two, three, I can select and quickly run and it does it all, it's already pre-configured for me. If in fact this report is to your liking to run the report, we can double select on the report by title, this custom field. And now here, or this would actually be this contact listing report, right? This custom report we created. I'm gonna run it one more time because it should have pulled back some data here. So let's go into reports, contact reports. And this time we can actually go a little quicker. I'm going to select on custom field. And from custom field, uh, this is my custom report. And I'm now going to incorporate file as. Please excuse me as I locate that. Custom field, the first one we're going to want to use, and I'm probably probably skipping right over it. Here it is, file as, add. The next one we're going to incorporate is going to be home phone number or home phone. Point, select add. We also want to incorporate here referred by add. And there was one more that I would like to include as well, and that's going to be contact sense. Add. Now let's go ahead and just double select on custom field, and now you can actually see. File as is populated, home phone numbers, referred by, and a contact sense. Now from this particular report itself, in the upper left hand corner, if need be, we can export this report as well as print. If we export the report, maybe we can use this list to create a marketing list or export as far as the emails to create a mass email campaign. However, here is where you can create custom reports based on certain column fields that you're creating that can give you information that you can take and actually use. Let me just close this report. Once again, to set this report, you will find it under reports, contacts, you're going to begin with custom field. Now that custom field once you select on it, keep in mind, unless you have already created the report by title, it would be here. You can double select on it based on the configuration and obtain the data that you would need. But if in fact you are creating this, yes, you can create it on the fly and generate your report. I would highly recommend that you take a look at the billing report, contacts report, project schedule, as well as staff reports. Once again, a lot of offices will only focus on specific type of reports, such as billing or projects, and that's pretty much as far down as it would go. Uh, I like to explain to clients to generate these reports. It's about input versus output. If, in fact, you do not know the output you would receive when running the report, before you spin your wheels, and this is that custom report, but let me just select on a different uh, report. Before I spin my wheels, contact activity on configuring my filters, adding in different activities, I have no clue 
what the output of this report is going to give me. So I always like to first double select to run that report take a look at my output, and it will give me a better understanding on how to come back and possibly configure these filters to adjust my input to be able to receive the appropriate output of the report. So custom reports are available to you as well as your staff, and it could very well be pulling information that other reports within Office tools or streamlining information where you may be taking multiple reports and bringing them together to come up with the end result. And here is where you can create those custom reports. Now let's go straight into form letters. Please note, as we go into form letters, this is not a word processor. This is not meant, or this is meant for basic mass mailing and basic email campaigns. So if we come out of reports, but we're actually going to select on reports right again, and at the top, we'll come down to form letters. And as you can see, there's three types of letters that can be selected here. Appointment confirmations, contact letters, as well as project letters kind of give you a better understanding on appointment confirmations? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You choose a date range and send out an email or a letter to confirm the appointment. It's pretty straightforward. Your project letters, which was the third option down at the bottom, well, they're very specific and the merge fields that you can use, well, it's more so gauged to the project for your client. But today, what we'll focus on will be your contact letters. Well, this will be mostly used. And they are also, out of the three options here, the most customizable. So you get a lot more out of it based on the way you probably would want to communicate as far as to your contacts. So let's actually go into contact letters. When selecting on contact letters, and let's just go from top to bottom, here you'll begin with form letters. If, in fact, you have already created form letters within your office tools, you'll be able to view these form letters from this drop-down by title. However, to create a new form letter, to the right you'll find this ellipsis button you can select on, and after selecting on, it'll take you to form letters where you can create. Once again, working top to bottom, using your toolbar, we can select on Add and then provide a title that you would like to call this particular form letter. All right? And any given time, based on the title here, we can select on it. And Office Tools would generate that particular form letter to allow us to be able to send out. But uh, we're not going to actually create the form letter here. It's about uh, data entry. But just real quick to kind of give you an understanding to how the letter is actually saved here we would wipe clean as far as insert title and i'll add in test down below i can either create my letter here maybe i already have the letter somewhere else where i can copy and actually paste it here and if in fact i do paste it here please note to customize it to the actual contact that I'm sending. I'm sending out to many different contacts, but I want each contact to have that warm, fuzzy feeling inside of, this is specifically for me. Well, I can include these merge fields, such as maybe I want to incorporate uh, um, uh, date of birth, uh, embed that. The best way to do it is actually populate your letter here and then come back adding in your merge fields to actually personalize it. After you're done creating your letter, you can then select Save, Close, and now it will take you right back to this location. With the understanding, your form letter has already been created. Now we need to associate or call for the form letter to actually get it out. Up at the top, if you have saved that form letter, you will then be able to find that form letter by title. You would then be able to select on that form letter. In this case, I'll select on client letter. And after selecting on client letter, I can now call for uh, the filters. Using my filters down below, who 
am I looking to actually send this client letter to? I can use a specific name, meaning a specific contact or multiple contacts. I can send this by contact type. Maybe I want to send only to my prospects, or maybe I want to send only to my, my vendors or professionals. Okay. Maybe what I'm actually going to do is say, I would like to send to the contact type of prospect. However, they must be a prospect with the entity type configured to individual. So not all prospects, but prospects that are considered individual. I can also include these custom fields. I know you see test, test two, test three. But if I slide this over actually to the left, you can see my custom fields for my contact tabs. Test, test one, two, three. Well, I can also incorporate only the ones that are used for the drop down to incorporate certain contacts to be able to be pulled in to receive this client letter. Maybe I need to get out a client letter, form letter, only to specific clients based on balances that are older than 30, 60, 90, or 120 days because this particular contact letter is going to be for collection purposes. So there's a lot of flexibility here. And oh, by the way, we can even communicate or send this based on the actual contact group, which we'll be going into shortly. Once, the, once we have made these selections here, at this point in time, we have two options and everyone loves options. Option one, we can choose to actually print to send or actually email to the client and send. Please note, if in fact you are looking to email this form letter to your clients via office tools, make sure the client themselves, and as a best practice, most offices do this, but make sure the client themselves has an email associated to their actual profile within the contacts tab. Now, I stated we go into contact groups after and this is that time. Now, contact groups itself has a lot of weight, a lot of power within Office tools. And I will, I'm also here to tell you, amongst, di amongst different offices, I would like to tell you that contact groups should be used a lot heavier than the, what they are. But this more so tells me maybe the office or offices are unaware of contact group or unaware of the different areas we can incorporate and use co these contact groups to pull back a lot of information. So here's uh, two questions that normally comes up. One, I have an owner with many companies and I wanna run a report on all totals. That's a contact group. I have an owner with many companies and wants a total on all projects for these companies across the board. Great, that's a contact group. Using those two examples, at this point in time, this should allow you to be able to jog your mind and think, oh, I can see using a contact group for this particular example within my office. Wonderful. So how do we access these contact groups? And please note, there's two different ways. And within Office Tools, there are a lot of times multiple ways to get from point A to point B. It's more so are you left brain, right brain? What type of navigation workflow do you have in Office Tools? And it allows you to pick what path you would like to choose. So I will demonstrate both paths today to kind of give you a better understanding. So the fastest way, based on where we're actually located, to get to these contact groups, with the contact being selected, we will come to this Contacts tab. The toolbar, each tab has a unique toolbar to take action within that tab. We can come down to the gears or the settings. After selecting on the settings, and actually I have a window open with Office Tools. That was my form letter, so let me close that. Contacts tab. Let's come to the settings, and here you can see contact groups. Now, keep in mind, for the contacts selected, we are going to provide to you a view of all the contact groups this contact currently selected is actually in.
Now, it would be as simple as these are the contact groups that we currently have as far as within our instance of office tools. And if, in fact, I would like to have the contact who was selected here, Annette, to be added, let's say, to the accounting as well as to the holiday, I can do multiple here holding down control, as well as a payroll client, I can now add them over, many or one at a time. Maybe there's a contact group I have in mind by title that I do not see here. Great. Well, let's say the available contact groups, this is our bank, our available contact group bank per se, the ones that we can use. Well, right below this, if you see this option titled Define Contact Groups, well, if I select it, now it takes me to the Contact Groups Bank, right? If it's predefined here, well, it will be incorporated, and then, I can, then this would allow me to have this contact group be assigned to certain contacts. Now, as soon as we select it on Define Contact Groups, at that point in time, this Contacts or contact groups window is no longer directly associated with Annette's housekeeping. This is global. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to close this. Up at the top, second option, which will take us to the same place, setup, contacts, and from here, we can go into assign contact groups. And if you're looking to go straight to the bank to refine as far as the contact groups by title, well, down below, define contact groups, and it takes us directly to that area. Close, set up, contacts, contact, or assign contacts by group, by contact, by contact group, and then define. So let's go back to the first option, contact selected, contacts tab selected, using the toolbar, come to the gears, we're going to go right into the contact groups to give more of more understanding now. Now, at this point in time, of course, we now understand we can create to add to this contact group bank. From here, we can actually take the contact groups that we would like to associate to Annette's housekeeping and actually move them over right on the fly and select close. Or we may also assign by the contact group. As an example, uh, above, I can now say contact group, accounting client, right? And instead of cherry picking, meaning doing one contact at a time, that can take forever, I can come to assign contact by groups to actually grab many different contacts to associate to a contact group at one time. So let me back up to kind of paint a clearer picture. If, in fact, I was looking to add Annette's housekeeping to a contact group, we understand. We can come to the gears, contact group, and we can now move them over. Once I'm done, I can select OK, and we would have, or we would have updated Annette's housekeeping to associate her to the appropriate contact groups. Once you're done, you'd go to your next contact, contacts tab, settings, contact group, and then move on, on and on and on. Yes, this does work. However, it will take you a long time. So instead of cherry picking here, that's Shante's terminology, what I would recommend that we do is select on the appropriate contact, contacts tab, using the toolbar settings, and let's go right into contact groups. And now assigned by contact group, this would allow us, based on the contact group that is already predefined, such as accounting client, you'll notice that Office Tools loads all of my contacts here. Now for this contact group, Office Tools is saying which one of your contacts or which, which of your contacts here should be within this group. And the same concept, holding down control or holding my left click down, I can grab in bulk. I want this one, I want that one, I want this one, add and then close. So this is a fast way to grab many different individual contacts and add them to a contact group. Or better yet, question one, question two, that started off these contact groups. I have an owner who has many different companies and I want to report for all totals. Well, if that's the case, 
uh, let's just call uh, this particular owner John Smith. Well, in this case, I can say accounting client, and I can now search for all of John Smith's um, companies here or contacts here to move them over. Please note, I have even seen offices based on specific clients. Maybe I have a client who has several different companies. Well, I want to create one single contact group for that one client. Great. That makes all the sense, especially if that's one of your VIP clients. So after predefining as far as your contact groups, associating the contacts to the appropriate groups, now let's close. And let's just backtrack for a second. If we come back to reports, any one of these category reports, whether it's billing, Instead of running individual reports and then running those reports up together, maybe I now would like to have, let's say, um, billing statement or the billing history for a specific contact group of accounting client. Right? You're going to find contact groups in billing reports, contact reports, project reports, schedule reports, as well as staff reports. If I close this, we can also incorporate those same contact groups where we just came out of form letters. Maybe I would like to send this form letter titled new client or uh, letter or whatever which one, right? And I only want it to go to a specific contact by group accounting. Well, in this case, remember, this ellipsis allows us to grab more than one, and it's more so a grouping, a collection. So this contact groups, once again, for reporting purposes, you can get a lot of data here for mass mailing purposes. You can get from point A to point B quickly. It's about creating, or better yet first, configuring or it would actually be the same. Creating your contact by groups, number one. Then associating the appropriate contacts that you have in Office Tools to the appropriate contact groups that you just created or if you're using the contact groups that we offer out of the box. That is your work. Once that work is done, now the sky's the limit on how quickly you can pull this data and apply it to the reports or mass mailings and so forth. And that would be your form letters. Now, once you have your form letters created, the next thing at that point in time would be going into labels. Of course, we do have that option to go ahead and email the form letters as we just went over. But in this case, let's go ahead and go cover for those who are actually mailing out these form letters using labels. So to access labels, let's close this form letters here. Up at the top, you'll come to reports. Down below, you'll see labels and envelopes. There's two options. There's print and customize. Your number one option here is going to be customize. Your number two option is going to be print. So let's go into customize. When selecting on customize here, we're now able to choose what label by name we're looking to print. If this is predefined, of course, you can go ahead and just go straight to print. But if you're looking to predefine the label, First, we must, working top to bottom, select on Add. And now you'll notice new label, and it is pre-selected for us. We can delete or just overtype. In this case, we're now going to provide a title for this label. I'm going to title this 1040. Um, one, two, three. Test, just to make it unique. Now, what type of a label would you like to use? Open in the drop down for label type, the majority you are going to see here will be Avery. However, if we scroll down all the way to the bottom here, we can select on custom label to create our own dimensions if necessary. This is the one we'll actually use. Now, depending on what you would like to have printed on this label, once again, we can use these merge fields. So what are we looking to have print on these labels? I'm going to say the address, the contact name, 
So let's go ahead and open the drop down. My cursor is actually here. And now I'm going to look for, let's say, address. And I'll use address block. What's the next one? The next one that I would like to use is going to be contact name. Well, contact name is going to be listed as print as or file as. So in this case, I'll use hmm, print as or yes, print as. Now you'll notice the two merge fields will be placed together in the same line. Please keep in mind, you want to format this based on the way you would want it printed. I have address block first, and then I have print as second. If, it, in fact, it is to your liking, wonderful. In this case, we can select close to create this, and then we can always come back to the 104123 test, and it's already pre-configured for us to actually use and print. So let's actually just close this. And if I come back to reports, labels and envelopes, customize, you'll see 104123 test. Here it is. If it's to your liking and you're ready to print based on the merge fields that you have added in, it would be as simple as selecting on print. Now, please note, there's two options here once we configure as far as our contact label and envelopes. And I'll make sure to go over these two options to make sure everyone is on the same page. Up at the top, selected items. In this case, we're going to select the label that we would want to use. And then now, filters and fonts, right? And if you notice here, you'll also see contact groups once again. Now, at this point in time, we can preview or we can print. Now, there's going to be two options here. How many copies would you like to would you like of each label? Well, we can configure this one, two, or however many copies you may need. Maybe you only need one copy. Now, in this case, how many labels would you like to skip? Well, this is important here. And the reason why this is important, if you're running pages on Avery labels, this would allow you to skip. Let's say you're on uh, uh, page nine, or you're, on, you're nine pages in. You can put in nine here and begin on 10 and everything will line up correctly for you. And it would be as simple as, in this case, for this example, nine, or where you would like to begin. Now, that's our understanding. I'll select cancel here, close, as far as on labels. Customize to configure print, you're going to come back to actually print. Now, if in fact you do have questions, feel free to present them via the chat. At this point in time, this will conclude as far as our Office Tools free Thursdays training session. I would like to thank everyone so much for your time. And if there are no questions for you, feel free to go ahead and disconnect. Great. I myself now disconnect. Thank you.